So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 maths and we'll, in this video we'll be continuing with algebra with a focus on comparing coefficients. Now in maths a coefficient is how much of a variable or letter you have or it's the number of variable uh, or letter is being multiplied by. So for example if we have a look at these three expressions it says state the coefficient of each variable. So let's have a look and get a decent color pen. Let's go for red. So in this first example, so let me just separate these questions first. So here the coefficient, which I'm just going to call coef, of a is how many, what number is in front of the a, which in this case is 3. So the answer there would be 3. The coefficient of b is what number, how many of b's have we got? Well, here we've got to take the uh, consideration of the sign that's on the left. So that answer there would be minus 5. And finally, what's the coefficient of C? Well, that's going to be the number including the sign that's in front of the C, which is plus 7. So I'm just going to write 7 there. And there are my three coefficients. So looking at question 2, so here I've got coefficients of x cubed, I've got x squared, and I've also got x. Now remember that x squared and x's and x cubes are all different variables because obviously the power just means it's like a different letter. So the, even though you can see the same letter, the fact it's got power makes it a different variable. So looking at these then, so we're looking at how many x cubes have we got? Well, what number have we got? Well, we've got positive 4. I'm just going to write 4 there. What's in front of the x squared? Well, that's going to be again minus 5. And what number is in front of the x? Well, you can't see a number, but there is a number, and that's going to be minus 1. So when you can't see a number, it's always going to be 1, but obviously just check, double check on the sign on the left, because obviously that belongs to whatever number or whatever variable precedes it on the right, and so there we would have minus 1. Then finally, moving on to question 3. So here I've got coefficients of x to the power 5, a cubed, y squared, and I've got b. So looking at this, we've got coefficient of x to the power 5 is going to be 10. The coefficient of a cubed is going to be minus 5. The coefficient of y squared is going to be minus 1. The coefficient of b is going to be positive 1. Now, when you have got a number that hasn't got a letter or a variable, we could should say mathematically, then what we call this is we call this the constant. So here we've got a constant value of minus 5. So this value here, when it hasn't got a letter, is what we call the constant. So when it comes to comparing coefficients, now we just now what we're going to do is just reintroduce what an identity is. So an identity is when a mathematical expression is equal to another, such that when the variables are the same, they produce the same value within a certain range of validity. Now that may make absolutely no sense to you at all, but do not worry, it's just the de the actual definition of what an identity is. Now if you come across what looks like a triple line equal sign. It basically represents that the left hand side can be written algebraically and it's the same as the other. To which where you, if you substitute the same value of x into the left hand side, it should give you the same value on the right hand side. So for example, if we let x equal 2. Now I've just made 2 up, it could be any number. Okay, now if in terms of, if it could only be certain values of x, that's where this certain range of validity comes in. So that it can only be, the, it's only the same for certain values, but that kind of goes into much higher level of mathematics to talk about A level here. So if I let x equal 2, and I look at the left hand side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute x equals 2 into this. So what I've got is I've got 2 squared plus 5 times 2 plus 6. And if I work that out, I've got 4 plus 10 plus 6, which equals 20. Then if I look at the right hand side of this, and I swap x equals 2, so I've got 2 plus 3, and then I've got 2 plus 2, or well, 2 plus 3 gives me 5, times 2 plus 2, which is 4, which equals 20. And as you can see, it's given me the same value. So that's where an identity comes in.
So if you look at this second example here, again, if I expand the brackets out, I get 3a plus 3b, and you can see how these two things here are the same. So that's why it's classed as identity, because even though they look different, algebraically, they still give me the same amount. So if I was to let a equal 2 and b equal 3, well, because they give me the same expression, it was guaranteed to give me the same value. So here it would give me 3 times 2 plus 3 times 3 which is 6, plus 9, which is 15, and again, apply the same thing to this one, so 3 lots of 2, plus 3, 3, gives me 6, plus 9, gives me 15, again, so you can see how that's what an identity is. Now you may think, if depending on what level you're working at, whether it's key stage 3, key stage 4, this is pretty pointless, obviously, this can be the case, however, identity is kind of more used at high level maths, but this is just touching the surface of uh, introducing the concept of an identity. So let's have a look at some example questions then. So it says, often you may get asked to find the values of some variables in identity by comparing the coefficients. So here in example, we're asked to find the values of A and B. Now this top tip is probably the first thing that you want to do. Now even if you have absolutely no idea what we're talking about in this particular question, if you just simply expand the brackets, that should be good enough to get you your first mark in an exam. So let's have a look at question one then. So here we've got a bracket and here we've got, and we want to try and find the values of a and b. So the first thing I'm going to do is expand the bracket. So here I've got 3ax plus 6b and that's going to be equivalent to 18x plus 24. Now this is where I want to compare the coefficients. So here the coefficient of x on the left hand side is 3a and the coefficient on the right hand side is 18. So that means that 3a equals 18 and if that is true then all I need to do is divide by 3 and I get that a equals 6 so there's my first value now looking at comparing the second um, looking at the constant so here I've got 6b here and I've got 24 so that means that those two things must be equal so here I've got 6b equals 24 so if I take the 6 over by dividing I get b equals 4 and there are my two answers. So moving on to question two. Now again, question two may look a little bit more confusing because there's a lot more things you've got to do, but again, all we've got to do is just expand the brackets. So here I've got ax squared plus 6ax, find that out, and then plus bx plus 6b. Now, in terms of this, what I can do is well, comparing the coefficients, so looking at the coefficient of x squared, I've got 2, and on the right hand side, I've got a. So that means that a must equal, or let me just try and put, well, more mathematics, let's say a level way of doing this would be doing this. So let me just write it as 2x squared plus 16x plus 24. And what I've got in my, this line here, is I've got ax squared. Plus. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorise this. Now you don't need to depending on what level you are because I'll, I'll explain to you why this is not even going to be needed. So here we've got 6a plus b x because if I factorise this, both got x's and again you can look at the video on factorising to give you that and I've got 6b. I'll tell you how this isn't really going to be used. So comparing the coefficients, I've got 2 here and I've got a here. That means that a must equal 2. Then looking at this, I've got 24 must equal 6b. So here I've got 6b equals 24, so therefore b must equal 4, and there is my answer. Now if I wanted to, I could check using this expression here. So here I've got 6a plus b equals 16. Well, if a equals 2 and b equals 4, let's see if this is the case. So I've got 6 times 2 plus 4, and that's 12, plus 4 equals 16. So therefore I've checked that these two values here are correct. So moving on to question 3. So here in this particular example we've got A on one side and B on the other. But the concept is still the same. The first thing we want to do is expand the brackets. So expand the brackets here I get 4AX plus 24A is identical to 24X minus 2b. So now comparing the coefficients, I've got that 4a 
must equal 24 because again both sides have got x and 4a even though it's a letter is how many x's that I have got so these two things here must be the same so 4a equals 24 so take the 4 over so a equals 6 so that's my first value now looking at the second coefficient I've got 24a equals minus 2b so if I write that down so here I've got 24a equals minus 2b now I know that a equals 6 so here what I've got is I've got 24 times 6 equals minus 2b now 24 times 6 is 144 so 144 equals minus 2b so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that minus 2b so I'm going to divide by minus 2 so 144 divided by minus 2 gives me an answer of minus 72 and that's what equal to be now here you just got to be careful of this minus and just don't forget that minus because a lot of students would forget that minus so here is my answer so a equals 6 and b equals minus 72 so looking at our final example now this example is taken from a level or further maths and but again the concept is exactly the same so first things first what we'll do is we'll expand this bracket so here what we've got is we've got ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx and that's just me expanding those three terms and then what I'm going to do is expand using the 3 and multiply those 3 out together so here what I've got is I've got 3ax squared squared that so let's put squared there and then plus 3bx plus 3c now there's a reason why I've put this in nice little columns and organize it the way that I am because it just makes it easier for me to factorize so for example here I've got ax cubed now for the x squared well I've got plus b plus 3a x squared then looking at the x's I've got that so I've got plus C plus 3BX and then I've got plus 3C. Now don't, like I said, this is quite high level math, so if you're not sure about the factorizing, again, it more comes into A level. Now in this notation, what I then do is I'm now going to compare it to my original equation. So here I've got X cubed plus X squared minus 14X minus 24. Now at this stage, this is where I want to compare my coefficients. So if I get a different color pen, let's go for blue. So here, if I just write ones in front of the ones that I haven't got a number. So here what I've got is I've got that a must equal 1. Because that's how many coefficients of x cubed I've got. So a equals 1, that's fact. Then looking at this one here, I know that 3c must equal minus 24. So 3c equals minus 24. So dividing that by 3, I get c equals minus 8. And there's one value. Now all I then need to do is pick one of these brackets. So I'm going to go for this one here. So I've got that 3, uh, b plus 3a, so b plus 3a must equal 1. Now I know the value of a because that's 1. So I've got b plus 3 times 1 equals 1. So b plus 3 equals 1. So take the 3 over and to minus 3. So b equals minus 2. And there are my three values. So there are my three coefficients of a, b, and c. And there you go. But like I said, question 4, if you're completely confused on question 4, do not worry. That kind of delves into additional maths, further maths, A-level maths. But at GCSE level, I would say you can pretty much expect questions that look like this. Or questions that look like this when comparing um, and co coefficients of variables.